Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Apex 2016 and I'm joined by Kevin from Simplematic and Rick from Vertex to talk a little bit about reshoring or right shoring or I believe as you guys call it smart shoring. Let's talk a little bit initially about what you mean by smart shoring and, and, and how you think of it as an organization. Okay, really smart shoring is, is, is not saying there's, there's one solution that fits everybody. It's being able to find the right solution that meets your customer's needs, that addresses their concerns. Uh, if somebody in North America is needing the flexibility, pulling it in from Asia, waiting six weeks on water for something to come over doesn't give them the flexibility. But it still might make sense for us to acquire certain parts of it in Asia and blend it all together at our facility in Austin or Wisconsin or Mexico and being able to meet the customer's needs in a highly flexible, highly configurable environment. So so smart shoring is is not just reshoring because it's I, I'm still I still need my offshore suppliers. Yeah. So it's getting the mix right and selecting the right project. And when you look at it from your point of view, from an automation point of view, it's about making making the um, jobs that are appropriate to the U.S. more competitive, the projects that are more appropriate to the U.S. more competitive. That's correct. Yeah, he actually he hit the nail on the head. Uh, Simplematic Automation is doing a great job uh, in combining conveyors that are manufactured in the U.S. and robotic automation systems that are manufactured overseas for our customers. But ultimately, it's it's bringing smarter jobs to the U.S. Uh, it's ultimately saving uh, companies that normally would be going going back offshore uh, and we're really happy to be a part of uh, this whole process to help develop and improve the economy. Mm. And you, you mentioned that you know there are some facilities that, that would literally not be not be around if it weren't for some level of automation. How does that how does that dynamic work? Well, it's perfect. Uh, there's a growing trend right now where companies and uh, they're facing wage increases. Uh, you know, employees are demanding more pay. States are looking to standardize a higher minimum wage, and as a result, uh, you know that cheaper labor force is disappearing. So, we're trying to uh, bring about you know increasing robotic automation in facilities to help keep jobs in the U.S., uh, but make them smarter jobs that are uh, using you know, smart robotics. Okay. Rick, from your point of view, do you see automation as a way to being more competitive and actually narrowing that price gap? We absolutely are. In fact, what he was saying is, is that focus on automation allows us to be more competitive. Uh, we might not be able to keep some of the jobs here that we have here without the automation. There is cost pressures. You've got to be able to meet that price point. You've got to be competitive and automation is our method to be able to 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 service that part of the market so we bring that as a service to our customers to try and implement as much automation as we possibly can through the process driving down the cost and allowing them to still keep it in north america where they want it you, you have to have the blend of both yeah and the the key is really choosing the right project do, do the buyers truly understand the the um, the landed costs and the and the add-on costs of sourcing from somewhere that's a long distance from from their facility. Some buyers do, and I think you're seeing more sophistication in a market that that continues to have pressure for the flexibility and the configurability, and it, so it's no longer just a, sp a spreadsheet with you know the lowest price on the check sheet. That's the guy we go with. It's, it's done. It's now they again a more sophisticated buying market. They've lived through the pain of not being able to meet the market conditions. They've lost business to competitors who had more flexibility, could offer more configurability. This is what automation brings to us. This is, you know, this is how we keep it here. Yeah. So that flexibility, that that low vol, very low volume, high mix, that's something that that you can support very much through an automated solution. Correct. Uh, just in terms of con uh, conveyors and material handling systems, we do have a lot of customers that do have high mix, low volume projects. Mm -hmm. But the benefit to using robotics um, and having a staff and team that are uh, appropriately changed, you can very easily and readily reconfigure robotic applications uh, for changing products or saving different recipes uh, for different projects that may uh, be produced during a line run. Okay, and in terms of in terms of trend, Rick, are you seeing customers actually asking you about specific projects that they've got in Asia or elsewhere that they're looking to bring back to the Americas, maybe for non-commercial reasons, but they need to maintain a commercial value in the project? Yeah, we actually have a significant number of them right now that we're working with, and it's, they've dealt with the pain of, of needing the configurability, the flexibility, and trying to drive changes through their system. This takes a lot of time, effort, energy, people flying over there, flying back, inventory on the ocean for, for six, sometimes eight weeks. Uh, they're not able to meet their customers' demands with that 
type of environment. So they're bringing their products back over. Now these are not high volume products that are running a million a month type things. These are low, high end, high complexity type of products where the customers are demanding configurability and flexibility. They want it to look like the product that they want to display in their store is not going to look like the one that's in, a, you know, in another big box store. So that's the market that we've been able to address with this kind of flexibility. And they are, they've assessed the cost of this and it's gone beyond the buyer. It's now, it's gone all the way up to the COO level in the company, the CEO level, and, and they're realizing that their ability to gain further business is inhibited by the fact that they can't respond quick enough. Okay, so they're trying to bring these products back and we've, we've got a unique solution to do that. Yeah. And so yes, we have a number of them that we're working right now. Okay, so what we're really talking about is we're talking about smart manufacturing that's allowing, allowing us to be more competitive in the US. We're talking about smart sourcing from a point of view of the buyer and actually a buyer education um, to allow them to do that. And a really smart and aggressive supply chain that is nice and tight, nice and agile that suits the current market. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for talking to me and I hope we can talk again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.